Have a look at this one, the paths of the sea. What does it mean? What does the paths of the sea mean? In the mid-1800s, there was a famous guy called Matthew Murray, and he was an American astronomer, historian, meteorologist. That's the science of atmosphere and weather conditions. We said that before. And cartographer, which is the study of making maps and charts. An author, geologist, educator, and he worked for United States Navy. I don't know how he had time to do that. But, um, but actually what he's most famous for, as if that's not enough, is that he was an oceanographer. This, in CBN News it says this about this guy. What many people don't know is that Murray was a committed believer, a staunch defender of the Bible. That means he was a strong defender, a firm defender of the Bible as a source of science. He actually believed that the Bible was scientifically accurate. His nickname was Pathfinder of the Seas. They called him that because his favorite verse in the Bible was Psalms 8.8 where it talked about the paths of the seas. He was convinced that if the Bible said there are paths in the seas, there's going to be paths in the seas. That's how he took it. It's quite straightforward. So he went to look for it. What's interesting is that when, his, when this was written 3,000 years ago, the only sea that the ancient Hebrews would have known about would have been the Mediterranean Sea, the Red Sea, the inland lakes, lakes such as the Dead Sea or the, um, the Sea of Galilee. And none of these seas had any currents whatsoever. In fact, David, who wrote this, would have probably never seen an ocean. How incredible. And he wrote this. And despite that, Mary trusted the Bible. And he said, well, if it says there's paths in the sea, I'm going to go and find it. And guess what? He found it. And when he found it, he immediately revolutionized travel altogether. This article goes on to say, <clears throat> goes on to say Mary's findings affected business immediately. It cut sailing times by, by weeks, even months, on long voyages and saved millions in the process. This guy said that the commercial impact was phenomenal. It's almost as if jet planes had been introduced to the transatlantic travel. What's even more fascinating is that during this time in the mid-1800s, Charles Darwin was going around, busy drawing attention to his theory of evolution, dissing the Bible. In the meantime, Mary, who was also known as the scientist of the sea, was proclaiming the Bible is scientifically accurate. How incredible is that? And he was making all these amazing discoveries in the name of the Bible, in the name of God's Word. Mary said that the Bible is true and science is true, and therefore the truth of the other, if truly read, proves the truth of each other. The short version of that is they're both true and they confirm each other's truth. That's what he's saying. The Bible and science prove each other. Matthew Murray textbook on oceanography is still taught in universities today. Can the Bible be used to make scientific predictions? Yes, it can.